Um, good to have you today. So if you're on Zoom, you can talk to me. I don't think we're going to be able to have Facebook on today. Um, so Mark, Marcella, Gabriel, um, Anna, Anne, Nicholson, Eunice, Janky, and Carrie. I en entered all of your six colors. Um, so I think we'll probably have some time to look at those. So we're going to look at Ian's, and then we're going to look at the ones that you sent as well. The interesting thing, for those of you that um, I saw when I went back onto Facebook um, to look at your six colors, um, three of you cho chose alizarin crimson, two of you chose quinacridone gold, three of you chose sepia, four of you chose ultramarine blue, and three of you chose yellow ochre. One, two, three, four. So 26 colors out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of you. So John, now of... you're live in Facebook. Oh. Mm -hmm. Got it. We are live in Facebook Europe. Yeah, yes. not, I'm, I'm Facebook Europe. I'm not live in Facebook here. In Facebook Europe. I just have one, which is called Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith Art Supplies. So it's okay. So it's Daniel Maria's. Smith Art Supplies underscore Europe. Daniel Smith Art Supplies underscore Europe. Shall I send you the link? Sure. I think that's fine, Angela. If, okay. if it's streaming, people can hear me. It's just if uh, any of you could read their um, hello, everybody on Facebook. We're having some issues in Philippines. They're having a, um, a tsunami. Um, a typhoon. A typhoon. <laughs> <I'm wrong. laughs> Whatever it is, it's nasty. <laughs> okay, so we're going to look at Ian Stewart's colors. And then um, some of you, uh, Anna, uh, Anna Marie, you sent your six colors, Mark sent his. So we'll be looking at those six colors as well. So let's start with Ian Stewart. He'll be here tomorrow. Ian's a phenomenal artist, um, brand ambassador, great artist. I think you'll enjoy what he does tomorrow. So Ian's colors are burnt umber, red, red scarlet, Chinese white, cobalt blue, cobalt turquoise, French ultramarine, green gold, Panza Yellow Light, a lot of you chose that one, by the way. Imperial Purple, Naples Yellow, Neutral Tint, New Gamboge, Permanent Alizarin Crimson. There's actually quite a few of you for your six colors that chose Alizarin Crimson. Um, Thalo Turquoise, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, which was also popular. Raw Sienna, Sedona Genuine, and Undersea Green. Those are Ian's colors. And we'll look at those first, and then we'll look at the other colors. So there was a question yesterday when I, or the last time I looked at the um, Facebook, and it was one that we go over quite a bit, which is the ultramarine blue and the French ultramarine blue. And what is the difference between the two? So how about, Hey, Mark, can I ask you that question? Can you explain that question? Do you feel confident in explaining that question? Um, I'm actually not too sure. I think they actually the, are the same. I think the, the, the French ultramarine uh, granulates because the particles are bigger. Um, that's, exact, that's exactly right. So oh, what Mark cool. said is exactly right. The, uh, it's, the pigment is PB29, pigment blue number 29. It's exactly the same between both French ultramarine and ultramarine. The French ultramarine has a slightly larger particle size. And so when light hits it, it moves toward the red or the warm. And when light hits the smaller particle size of ultramarine, it moves toward the cool or the green. And that's the difference between the two. So same exact, same exact particle. Thank you, Mark.
So Ian's palette and looking at it right here is actually quite bright. I'll show you. Oh. That's, that's the first eight colors of Ian's. So we're going to start with the raw umber. So the first one is raw umber. And it's going to be cad red scarlet. U, cad red scarlet U. So I don't know if you can see that there, but you can see it's kind of semi-transparent. It's, it's it's going over the top of that line. So the next one is Chinese white. I don't think I'm gonna put Chinese white down here because you're probably not gonna be able to see it if I do. So I think I'm just gonna skip it, but tell you that's part of Ian's palette. So the next one is, I've seen this on a lot of artists' palette and it's the cobalt blue. John, was that burnt umber or raw umber? This is a uh, burnt umber. Burnt Thank umber. Thank burnt you. umber. Yeah. So that's cobalt blue. And this is going to be cobalt turquoise. Cobalt turquoise. So all of, you, all of you on Facebook, I'm sorry I don't see your messages today, but that you're on Facebook Europe. Um, so I'm gonna get read your questions if you have questions, but I don't see them as I normally would. Um, John, I'm posting some here in the chat box so you can read them. Let me turn that on. Marilyn has a question. Uh, I wonder why artists chose cadmium hues in light of its opacity. So I, you'd have to, well, a good one to be what that, you know, Gabriel could probably answer that. Also maybe Mark and um, Johnny or um, Giovanni, but we chose CAD hues because we don't want to use cadmiums. Um, it's just something I don't want my people to use. So we just don't have them. They are really, they're made from, our CAD use are made with very bright pigments. Um, but maybe Gabriel, can you answer that question? Uh, John, that's correct. Um, a lot of people are starting to wise up on, you know, what they're using. You know, we've lost a lot of amazing artists over the years because of what's in the paint. And so that's why I'm uh, primarily painting with Daniel Smith is because you um, pay attention to that. And so, for instance, uh, I've subbed out my uh, cadmium red that I was using from another company to a pyro red. Um, I think I can still get the same effect in watercolor uh, that uh, I can with the cadmium red. Excellent. Thank and you. And Anna has her hand raised. Um, if she wants to unmute and share her thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. 
Hi, everybody. Uh, we may want to consider that we're not understanding the question entirely. I think they're quite asking about why are we choosing cadmiums, uh, not specifically only the, the hues, which are the replacements of the cadmiums, because the cadmium uh, originals are opaque, whereas the cadmium hues are semi-transparent and have, I, I haven't studied all of those yet. But they're asking, I understand, also about the opacity. Why are they asking for, why would an artist prefer an opaque watercolor when the opacity is when we're celebrating transparency as watercolorists? I think and so. I think, the ch for me, it, it's because um, it's hard to replace that hue. And I haven't seen success with that until the cadmium's hues have come out. The replacement of the opaques and the poisonous paints uh, have not had a good replacement until what I've been seeing in the last just very few years. And I'd be interested what other artists have to say on that also. Question? So I'll tell you, we brought out ours to match what we had before. Um, we tried to get this close as possible. So it, it isn't the artist. Um, this color right here is green gold. So it's green gold. And this is the Hansa yellow light. So I did Anna, add your list of six colors and I have them on the other table. So, um, okay, with any of, before I clean that off, would you like to see any of those mixed? So burnt umber, cad red scarlet U, Chinese white I didn't put down. This is cobalt blue. This is cobalt turquoise. This is French ultramarine. This is green gold. And this is Hansa Yellow Light. Hansa Yellow Light. May I request that we mix cobalt turquoise with burnt umber? Can you mix them very juicy and very wet so that we can see the granulation and the interaction? Mixed on the paper, please. Thanks. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah, you're welcome. So burnt umber. And what was the other one? And cobalt turquoise. Okay. Did I catch that right? Would it be possible to put a drop of very clean cobalt turquoise into that so it interacts yeah. cleanly? Thank you. Want to mix it in? Okay. Oh yeah. You're awesome. Okay. John, Rafael yes. Rafael posted a reply in the in the chat of Daniel Smith Europe 
In my opinion, he said, watercolor is transparent also in opaque paints, maybe in a somewhat different way. That's why many artists do use traditional cerulean, cadmium, and opaque earths, such as Indian red and similar. Thank you, Angela. Welcome. John, you want to show people that you're painting while I'm cleaning up this uh, palette? I thought it was really cool. Maybe they would like to see it. Yes, of course. Here we go. This is my palette. This is, is a painting. painting. This is a painting, yes. And it's a fun game, so you can maybe see what color I choose, and you can guess the colors. That's a fantastic game. I propose we play this game next time. <laughs> Is that you have a tube for each of the colors in your palette? It seems that there are more tubes. No, no, it's uh, 24. Okay. How long did it take for you to paint that, Johnny? Uh, about uh, one week, let's say uh, around uh, two hours a day, three may maybe. Mm -hmm. It's a gorgeous painting, gorgeous. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And the size of the painting? It's a half sheet, 38 to 56 centimeters. And what paper? Fabriano cold pressed. I love how seriously you've considered composition and the full range of values. Uh, thank you. You know that it looks like a color chart. You know, it looks like the wheel, color wheel, sorry. I, well, at well, first when I saw it, I thought it was a color wheel. That was the intention? Yes. Ah. So there is some method to your madness. Uh, warm and cold. Now you just need lunar violet. Lunar violet, it's right here. Amazing color, amazing color. Yeah, and lunar black is there also. Yeah. Moon glow. <laughs> now it's here, but I changed it now on my original pa palette. <laughs> Fabulous. It's an amazing I painting. I, you have to, to send me and I will print it <laughs> and have it to teach colors. <laughs> well, what are the yellows? What are the yellows that you have chosen? Well, buffed titanium, mayon yellow, kunagridon gold, or she red gold. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Those pieces like they're wet. Those are really cool. Mm. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Okay, so the colors I've picked down now are gonna be Imperial Purple, Naples Yellow, Neutral Tint, then we'll have New Gamboge, Permanent Lizard Crimson, Thalo Turquoise, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, and Raw Sienna. So I'll go over those as I do those. We start with imperial purple. Imperial purple. John, the red that you showed earlier was it cadmium red or cadmium red scarlet hue? Cad red scarlet. Cad red scarlet, yeah. Let's 
So this is going to be maple yellow. This is neutral tint. Neutral tint. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Susan says it's perfect name for pearl purple. It's a pretty color. This is new gamboge. It looks like our school buses here in the States. It's new gamboge. So the color of the buses is new gamboge? Yeah, some of them are, are probably more this color than like the uh, quinethalone. Some are the quinethalon color, but more are, are, are this kind of color. Ooh. Very close to this. Sometimes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, this is going to be permanent alizarin crimson. Quite a few of you chose alizarin crimson for your six colors. This is, this is permanent alizarin crimson. This is going to be phthalo, pretty much anything with a phthalo. Phthalos are just kind of like the life of the party. They are. It'll be interesting to see how Ian uses the phthalos. They're kind of intense. So that is phthalo turquoise. The first color, John, is that lavender? The first one, imperial purple. Oh, sorry. My screen for some reason looks lavender. Yeah, it's interesting that Facebook makes it look more true than Zoom does, which makes sense because Zoom is, I think, more of a social platform. I don't know. It just, for my eyes anyway. Um, this is going to be Quinburn Orange. Used to be, so Quinburn Orange, Quinn Gold are, are certainly among the most popular colors. Um, but Aussie red gold is extremely popular as well. Hello, Agnes. This is raw sienna, raw sienna. So we have imperial purple right here, followed by maples yellow, neutral tint, new gamboge, a lizard crimson permanent, Thalo turquoise, quinacridone burnt orange, and raw sienna. Okay. Would you like to see any of those mixed? And I'll take what we did before. So, can I request um, imperial purple and new gamboge? Absolutely. And when you're done with that, may I request the lavender with the uh, raw sienna, please? Um, I, have, I have no lavender. Oh, well, that first one? Imperial purple. Imperial purple. Okay. Those two then, but, please. Thank I know you. It, does, it doesn't look like that way on the screen. 
because even Gabriel said that it looks like it looks like uh, yeah I misunderstood thank you <laughs> yeah so imperial purple mark and what was the other color it was new game polish maybe you can do it like you did with for Gabriel last time and just put the two next to each other and just run the water between them absolutely Very nice, thank you. Yes. I've actually seen a painting done with this combination of Ian's. Uh, it makes gorgeous glow. Awesome. I want to say the painting, if you see it on his Instagram, it was like a train. Oh, yeah? Yeah, those two colors together. Oof. He also has a great book. Um, and in the book, he lists his Daniel Smith colors. Uh, in the book, he has almost like a dot card in his book. It's pretty cool. It just came out this year. It's called Light and Color. Who is it by? It. Who is it by? Ian Stewart, the gentleman that's going to do the demo, the one that we just are now looking at his colors. Tomorrow. He'll be with us tomorrow, right? That is correct. Yes. Yeah. That is lovely. And I wish, thank you very much, Gabriel. And which colors did you want to see? Imperial purple and. With the sienna, please, the neutralized yellow. Now, do you want it with the mask? One more time. Anna, can you say it one more time? The Sienna, the neutralized yellow. Please, thank you. Raw Sienna. So I got the raw Sienna. What was the second one? Imperial purple, please. And again, if you could mix them on this, like separated, and then run the water through them and maybe spray it so that you have gentle Absolutely. interaction. And so that each hue uh, and each color contains its original virtue characteristics. Okay.
okay, Anna? Anna, here was your other one you asked about. Now that's a little bit more dried. Okay, we'll get the last two of these dot card. Does anyone have a painting to show? Mark, have you done any paintings recently? Um, I just tried some some Newpo paper with the oh, sticks. Wow, very cool. Wow. So you, you so, sticks. Yeah, bit of a experimentation with uh, the Yupo and uh, it comes out quite nicely. How did you feel it? What what did you think? Well, I think um, it's quite different. Um, it's, it's nice that you can get nice deep hues. You can get the real, real deep hues, especially with the sticks, because um, this is actually the pyrrole red that I like and I use quite a lot. And um, this is just a sample sheet. But yeah, it turned out quite good. I've got to do some more experimentation. Have you tried the sticks on the UPO paper? Yeah, this is with the sticks, a mixture of the sticks and, um, and then with brush as well. And a little bit of um, spray. Everything. Fabulous. Thank you, so great. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, cool. Did, did you start with uh, the UPO dry, the paper dry? I actually started with it wet. Um, with it wet? And I, I, I won't do that again because the thing with UPO is that it. it takes forever to dry. So uh, I'm not gonna do that again. I'll probably just, what I found worked best was to wet the stick and then apply it to the, the UPO. Um, then you can get the nice deep um, the colors. And then if you need to spray after that, but I won't spray too much in the future because it just takes forever to dry. So literally like watching paint dry. Yeah, I tried it one time with alcohol ink and it was a mess, I couldn't. I couldn't manipulate it at all. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's lovely. Thanks. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Sure. We were talking recently, I'm so glad you did that. We were talking recently about the challenge and trying to figure out the experimentation of sticks on the UFO paper. Thanks, Mark. Probably well after watching um uh, the demo that we had on on UPO, I, uh, but yeah, um, I thought I'd try it out. That would be lovely to see. This is the last, the last. Thank you, Mark. This is the last two colors of the ends, which are the undersea green, and this is the Sedona genuine. Mm -hmm. Uh, John, Raffaele on Facebook is uh, saying, John, can you mix French Ultra and Burgundy Red Ochre if you have them on your desk now? Uh, I have French Ultramarine. Uh -huh. And what was the other one? Burgundy Red Ochre. I don't, I have Burnt Umber, but not Burnt. Burgundy Red Ochre.
maybe a similar color? Is there a different color? Could, one of the, let's see what I have here. See if somebody picked out for me. Right here. How about hematite burnt scarlet? Uh-huh. I love that color. Somebody picked this out as their one of the six they would want on their list. Oh, excellent. That was me. Was it really? Ah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, everybody says burnt sienna, burnt sienna. And um, I wanted to change it up for a while and use the, that one. And by doing that, you've managed to increase granulation. Yeah, and I could do a cool magic trick with a magnet and um, paint. Yeah. Really? How do you do that? Hematite is magic. Uh, I think you're going to have to give a display next week. Give a demo. <laughs> yes, demonstrate. <laughs> I will have to warn you, you will be amazed. <laughs> yes, like that, like that, John. Let it fall into the brown. Wow. That's a beautiful combination. You kept them clean and separate. Yes. Oh. I have that in my painting from this morning. Do you? Can you show us? This one. Hey, that looks great. Yeah. This is a beautiful. Hotel Dell. Uh huh. All right. Um, <laughs> This one here. Mm. So what color is this exactly? This is the um, hematite burnt sienna. And uh, this one is a little bit of what was left on my palette with the same blue that was uh, left over from yesterday. Mm. Really lovely. Really lovely. Well, let's pick some of the colors that you chose. So these are colors from Mark, Marcella, Gabriel, Anna, and Nicholson, Eunice, Yankee, and Carrie. So the six colors you would bring with you. It's actually kind of mixed, kind of cool. Rafael is commenting. Uh, is saying tomorrow I'm going to post some mixes I tried with burgundy red ochre as a base. Great granulating and warm PR uh, 102 paint. If you want to do some mixes and then just tell me and we'll spotlight you and you can show everybody your mixes. We can do that on a go forward basis. Mm -hmm. Love to see what you have. Yeah, that's a good idea.
May I share with that a little bit? Yeah. I had a friend, we were playing in a pile of leaves. It's still pretty warm here. And I asked him about what colors, how would he paint the color of the leaves? Uh, which pigments would he use? And I realized he, had, he just didn't have the vocabulary to discuss what pigments to choose. So I'm writing him a, a greeting card and I'm showing him all the different pigments you can use to draw the leaves because there's such a variety. I'll get this online hopefully. <laughs> and then the challenge of just trying to find exactly the right pigments. And I feel like this is the reason that we have a huge selection of color, but then within each painting, we choose a specific, a specific limited palette and each painting is unique because even you can see what a variety you can have choosing between yellows, oranges, and reds. Mm. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. And, Congratulations. And this allows my friend to see what on earth was I talking about because this is the vocabulary he was missing in order to um, in order to talk about what would he what pigments would he choose to paint a red and yellow leaf. Fantastic, fantastic leaves. Just That's today it. I collected some some autumn leaves. <laughs> These colors. Yes, and essentially they're color swatches. They're tests. They're color tests, but in the shape of a leaf. Uh huh. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to start with indigo. And some of you pick, you pick all these colors as your six that you bring with you. So indigo. Fabulous color, indigo. And then both panes, this is going to be panes blue gray. Which one? This is Payne's blue gray. Uh, plain, Payne's blue gray, yes. Payne's blue gray. Yeah. Somebody chose lapis. So lapis. And yellow with a choice for a pick. And then yellow. And this is Payne's gray. So Payne's blue gray, it's right here. This is gonna be Payne's gray. So pain's blue gray, pain's gray. They're quite similar, yeah, but one is bluer. This is quinethalone yellow. Quinethalone yellow, it's a very bright yellow. So. John? Yes. I want to show uh, my use of the. Um, uh, wait. I use the, the paints 
blue gray. Yes. With the uh, ultramarine blue. Just a moment. Unknown caller. Oh, that's cool. That paints, uh, I don't know if it's French ultramarine, maybe. And uh, the gray part on top is paints blue gray. Ooh, very neat. Very nice. Very nice, Angela. Thank you. And this is with uh, lunar violet. And, um, the edges is lunar violet. And in the middle is turquoise, cobalt turquoise. Very nice. Cobalt blue turquoise? Yes. Very cobalt nice. Turquoise. Very nice. And I love this lunar violet, the way it spreads and it granulates. Lunar violet, it's an amazing color. And John, may, maybe sometime you can show us the difference between the lunar violet and the uh, moon glow because they're pretty similar, maybe. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I'll show you moon glow in a second, but yeah, I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that next time. Great, thanks. Yep. Can you explain why you like lunar violet so much? Because I feel like I'm reluctant to buy uh, a pigment that's not a single pigment, that's a mix. I'm reluctant to buy the mixes. So why do you choose lunar violet instead of just mixing it yourself? Lunar violet, maybe you mean the moon, moon glow, because the moon glow is three pigments. Lunar violet, I think that uh, moon glow has um, quinaphthalone red. It has, uh, and whereas lunar violet has orange. I don't know if it's pyrrole orange. The difference is one has red and the other one has orange, as far as I remember. So moon glow is anthropoid red, iridian, and ultramarine blue. And then the other one is the shadow violet, which is transparent pearl, this transparent orange, viridian, and ultramarine. I think Anna's asking about um, lunar blue. Is that right, Anna? Lunar blue? Were we talking about lunar violet or were we talking about shadow violet? Because I know shadow, shadow violet and moon glow are co precipitated. So that's a reason to buy the mix. A good reason. No, sorry. Lunar, lunar violet. Sorry. This is so lunar violet is pigment violet 15 and pigment black 11. No, then it must be the... The lunar vi vi violet, it's ultramarine vi violet PV15 and right. Mars black. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's the granulation. It's so a granulation is, color. And it granulates beautiful. And my question is, why would you choose to purchase a convenience mix rather than make it yourself? Because you're saying this is a beautiful color and I'd like to understand. Yeah, okay, your... okay. Well, I love the granulation and I mostly paint uh, portraits and figure draw, draw, drawing. So I, I like the gra granulation just like an effect for, for the skin and the, and the shape. And it's a great color for the shadows and uh, the dark shadows. So I really li like it. Here it is. And uh, from my understanding, you're a fast painter too. Yeah. So you're ready to go. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Thank you, Anna. So what do you think these two colors are? A and B. Oh, uh, the alizarin crimson and the permanent alizarin crimson. Exactly right. This is permanent alizarin crimson and this is alizarin crimson. So on the islands, four of you picked the alizarin crimson to bring with you. And one's fugitive and one is not. Yes. The drops of water look fantastic in the permanent.
So I had oh, probably I have a couple of minutes. Let me show you the let me see if I can show you. I see Elisa's with her cats. Does anybody have any what they'd like to show or any mix they'd like to show? I know some of you do mixes along with me. I'd love to see yours. So Ian will be with us tomorrow. Um, fabulous painter, and I think uh, Gabriel's gone to his website, but you might want to go to his website and um, read about him so you can ask him questions or just ask him questions as he's painting. Ian is an open book. He loves to share uh, so much of his knowledge. He travels all over the world uh, teaching workshops, and uh, he will explain everything to you under the sun. And he is funny. Yes. I think he's Scottish, isn't he? Or from yes. a Scottish origin. Scottish origin, I think. I was living on a farm in the US in the East Coast. Let's do these real quick. So John, I have cobalt turquoise, I have phalo turquoise, but I have yet to uh, have ultramarine turquoise. Oh yeah? I have ultramarine rose, ultramarine uh, violet, but not ultramarine turquoise. And he listed ultramarine uh, turquoise in his book he wrote. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to, I think it's, it's so when each one of you, a lot of you anyway, pick six colors, that's hard to do. And pick the 18 colors, it's really hard to do. Um, especially, you know, if you've experimented a lot, it's just, it's real tough. So we all know that if we only had to choose one, one pigment, it would be French ultramarine, like uh, what John likes. Yeah, I, yeah, I like those colors. But it's, it's actually so beautiful to sit on a, here in Seattle, I flip the camera on, but it's gray. It's already gray at, at three o'clock. It'll be dark in another hour. It's actually really nice to look at bright colors because it makes that, that kind of that, gets you through that gray. So these are kind of colors that um, many of you had picked out. This is going to be, let's see if I mess myself up here. Cerulean blue, this would be cerulean blue. So the cerulean blue. It's a super gentle color. And then burnt sienna is another. Burnt sienna. This is one that we had just talked about. This is Moon Glow. One of my favorites. Well. <laughs> that would have gone in my list. It's on my list. Is it? This is also a really popular one on your list, which is, I've seen so far quite a few of the artists um, have been demonstrating this. This is the Cobalt Teal Blue. Oh yes, another beauty. Another one, John. Can you show us to together may, maybe the next time the cobalt teal blue and the sleeping beauty 
it was genuine, please. Yeah. Because they're really similar, but not quite. And it will be fun. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the um, this is the burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. This is actually a, a, a one that several of you picked for your six colors. Do you know which color that is? Um, serpentine or green appetite? I'm guessing that's sap green. It's, it's sap green. Sap green. Good job, oh. Anna. It's sap green. You're right. I know it's hard on these screens. And this one was also a very popular one. This one was very popular. I bet you would have changed if it was six colors and you're on the beach or six colors and you're you know on a farm or in or in the city. What do you think that is? Yellow okay. you, you did say that. You said six colors and on an island. Oh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, this makes sense then. You know, it's just what this one is. It kind of looks like sand. Yeah. Is that yellow it? ochre? Or? Yellow ochre. It's yellow yeah. ochre. Yeah, and it was very, very popular. I think five people chose that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the colors on the deserted on this list. And, and the cobalt teal blue is the color of the water. Oh. The brown is the rocks. The green is the vegetation. Yeah. The moon glow may be the color of, of the shark's skin, or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like the moon glow as it starts to dry. You can actually see the anthracnoid red. Very light color. Hi, John. Yes. Uh, what is the color after the cobalt teal blue? This right here. No, no. The one to the other side. Between the sub green and cobalt teal blue? Right here. Yes. This is uh, sepia. Sepia. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sepia. Awesome. So, so we have a little bit of a um, issue today. Uh, Ethel, that's normally does the phenomenal job of, and thank you, Angela and uh, Letiza, who flips around between Facebook and Zoom, um, is in a typhoon. Is that right, Angela? Typhoon? <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay, I finally got that right. I kept on saying tsunami, typhoon. So uh, I hope everything goes well with everybody in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. Uh, thank you all for joining today. So Ian will be with us tomorrow, phenomenal artist. Thank you for participating in the six colors. Uh, Mark, Anna, Gabriel, um, Anne, Eunice, Janky, Carrie, and Marcella, and um, probably some others of you as well. That was kind of interesting, the colors you picked out. And look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Be sure to ask Ian questions. As Gabriel's saying, he's just a, a very nice man who um, loves answering questions. Um, thank you for sharing your artwork. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. See you all sure. tomorrow. Bye. Bye. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.